Zumi's prayers, the unquenchable fire. Pink blossoms adorn the bushes and trees of the morning, bushes in which we hide, trees which stand tall above the earth, but not very tall. The light of the sun is blocked by them, showing but little of the perceptions needed. To us you are nothing, nothing. We had by sin lost the image of God and thereby all gracious acceptance with you. The image of God the Father is the Son, whom we have seen and will see. All of your essential properties belong also to the Son, from the Father by eternal generation. Bright in glory, you now are ours, coming down to us in your condescension to our human nature are the effects and likeness of this same image. We were by nature the sons of God, by virtue of our creation, then to our inheritance in you. We are recovered to this state by adoption. From your eternal love you sent the Son. You loved the world and sent your Son to die. The Son, forsaken, came near to extinction. But the same power of resurrection to the body and to the soul is retained in the essence of God. It is this mysterious essence which holds all power of love and light and life. All things of authority, goodness, love and power in the Father are given to our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and thence unto us. These mysteries shall never be understood. Only by revelation do we know of them. Our redemption and recovery of original gifts and more are special effects of the authority, love, and power of the Father, executed in and by the person of the Son. Thence the application unto us is by the Holy Spirit. Divine wisdom placed our redemption in the hands of the Son. What is farther must be referred to another world. We have weak and low conceptions of these things. We cannot find out the Almighty unto perfection. A small part of the glory of heaven will consist in that comprehension which we shall have of the mystery of your wisdom, love, and grace. Neither prophets nor angels knew these things. We are a generation of poor, sinful men who are little concerned in the glory of God or our own duty. Our knowledge of these things is superficial. Our studies, abilities, time, and diligence are turned to works of nature. We neglect, even some despise, the effects of divine wisdom and power in them. The mystery of God in the flesh and in all his works thereby, the concernment of God and man forevermore, this alone is that which fills up eternity. It seems to us now very little but then it shall be all. In these days we must spend our time in believing. The faith given to us has great power to change and to transform the soul into the image and likeness of Christ. This all in a dark glass. We are not much aware of this ongoing power in our life. And how shall any human means know such high and beautiful powers as these? The Holy Spirit operates them in our conscious absence. We are changed, made quite other creatures than we were, cast into the form, figure, and image of Jesus Christ, the great design of all believers in this world, not in any more than another, though some may rise up to perceive some vague sense of this ongoing life in us. We will find detestable the deformed image of our old man in our lusts of the mind and of the flesh, there is nothing so desirable as the image of Christ in us. The shame and bane of our earthly-mindedness disappeared. This is our preparation for the glory above, as we are now unconstituted to live in the profound rarity and alien nature of these realms. You will not take us into heaven in the vision and possession of heavenly glory, with our heads and hearts reeking with the thoughts and affections of early, earthly things. You have appointed means to make us ready for the inheritance of the saints in light before you will bring us into the enjoyment of it. 
See now the bush. It is not in a bloom of pink, but of fire. And behold, the bush burns, but is not consumed. This is our God and the unquenchable fire of your love, given to us to live now and forever. Amen.